Hello everyone, Des Kelly again here from GMIT Letterfrack and welcome along to another of our DCG SOLIDWORKS tutorials. Uh, just before we begin, if you'd like more information on the degree programs we offer in furniture design, wood technology or teacher education, then please see our Facebook or Twitter pages. Right, so this tutorial is going to run through how to draw this lever valve in SOLIDWORKS. Um, so we'll start off with the basic um, cylindrical portion. Uh, I had one of these taps and these measurements were taken with the calipers so I'll put them in pretty precisely as I found them when I measured it. Uh, so first of all we'll start a circle and we will dimension that to be uh, diameter 23mm and we'll simply extrude that and I'm going to extrude it to a height of 13.5mm. That's the size of the handle I had. Uh, we'll then put a chamfer on the top, so we'll go and hit chamfer, and it's a 2mm chamfer, and there you have it. And there's also a hole drilled all the way through, so we'll start a sketch of a circle. And we will set that to be diameter 5mm, and that is cut all the way through. So features, extruded cut, and through all. So there we have it. Now underneath uh, it's hollowed out, so we need to make um, provisions for that. So I'm going to look at 90 degrees to that surface and I'm going to start a sketch on that surface. The first thing I want to do is set a vertical and a horizontal construction line. So if I take this for construction, it will give me a dotted line. The good thing about that is it's um, not going to be counted for any features such as extrusions later. It's never going to get in the way, but it's there if I need it for construction. So what I want to do now is <clears throat> draw a circle there and one there. And I want to draw a line from the center here up to a point there. And also another line from the center here up to a point there. And I'm going to use the trim tool to trim away all these pieces that I don't need. I also need another uh, line over here. You'll see what these are for in a moment. And trim away the pieces I don't need. So I don't need this piece, that piece, that piece. Just delete away everything apart from those two shapes. And just to give them some dimensions then, I'm going to dimension that to that and set that to be a measurement of 3 mil. I want this to be a vertical measurement of 3mm. Again, I just got these measurements from the tap which I have in front of me and I, I measured them with the calipers. Three and this circle and that circle are going to be offset by 2mm. <coughs> and that circle 2mm as well. So what I need to do now is tell this line to, um, uh, for instance, if I drag this, you can see it's not fully defined because this line does not know where to point or where to go. So one possible way of doing that is to draw another line from there to there. Select that line and set it to be for construction and then hold control and select the little line and the long line and make those collinear. That will make those uh, fully constrained. Now I know I have to do that a few times, so for construction, from there to the center, hold control, click both lines, collinear. It's just important to get the sketches fully constrained, so there's no surprises. And one more. And there we have it. We've got a fully defined sketch, so we can now just take a look at what we have. It's those two shapes. So those two shapes, I want to go extrude cut. And if I extrude cut those down, they are removed. Uh, instead, I actually want those to stay, so I better make a small adjustment to that sketch. Edit sketch. I'll actually put back in that circle. And now if I go extruded cut, if I select that sketch, it will ask me which profile I want to extrude cut. I want to extrude cut this profile. And I want that to go down a depth of 4 mil. And <clears throat> there we have it. So I also want to do another sketch of a circle on this plane. 
and this is quite a simple one snap it on like that and do another extruded cut and again this is four mil so now we've got the underside of that and finally there's one more sketch on the bottom it begins with a circle and that circle's diameter is going to be diameter 8.1 and there's also going to be a line down to the left make sure it's vertical <coughs> and another line down to the right make sure it's vertical and those lines are going to be six millimeters apart and of course to center them I have to make sure that one is out three mil from the other and I'll trim away this bit of the curve to the left the bit of the curve to the right and I think now we're in business so features extruded cut one more time and that too is going down four mil so that's what the underside of that looks like that isn't the most complicated part of this, but uh, what I want to do now is actually get the handle working. So I'm going to pick a plane, let's just say the front plane, and I'm going to draw this sketch. Sketch looks a little bit like this. And I will dimension that so that this line is 16 millimeters long, one six. This angle should be 140 degrees. This line is going to be 12, and this horizontal line will be 60. And just to fully define it, I don't want it to go to the center. Instead, I want it to be 4 millimeters away from the center. Now, typically, if we were to extrude that handle, we would need to draw another line or offset that line down. But you can actually extrude a line like that. If you call up the regular extrude feature and hit the sketch, it will do what's called a thin extrude. A thin feature extrusion and it's nice because it shows off a different feature so first of all I don't want it to be a depth of four millimeters I want it to be something like let's say 20 how that look? see how three looks okay and I don't want it to go one-sided I want to change blind to mid plane mid plane and that looks a little bit strong so I might just change that to 18 there you have it and also, I don't want to go down that deep at all. So down here, it says 10 millimeters. I want to change that to approximately 3 millimeters. Now, it just happens that it worked out correctly. But if not, uh, if you were to get that, for instance, just take this flip direction button. There you have it. I'm actually going to take that down to maybe 16 millimeters. So it looks right. That's much better. Now, if you wanted, you could go auto fill at corners and it would fill at these corners for you. Why not do it? In fact, let's just put a radius of one millimeter on and take auto fill at corners. And if you press OK, it will fill at the corners there a little for you. Now, I just want to give that little review. I actually want that to be a little different. Uh, let's just make this go down. Oh, that, I see what I did wrong there. I'm going to go down uh, three mil. This is the auto fill at corner radius, one mil there. OK, that's much better. There I have it, there's the handle, <clears throat> and if I wanted, I could just um, leave it be like that, but I always like to put fillets on things like these to make sure that they, um, especially something that's going to be held in the hand, uh, you don't want to have sharp corners on it. So if I go to fillet, let's go to a full round fillet, and I want to select the left face, middle box, top face, bottom box, and the right face. And that pulls a full round fillet for me. Call up another fillet command, and I'll do a regular fill at this time, just say a millimeter. And I'll just take the top and the bottom. And I might as well just get this transition looking good here as well. Okay, I'll just change that to 0.5. That does look a bit severe. Okay. So what I want to do now, as you can see in the image on my desktop, <clears throat> is to put a rubber grip around that. The geometry involved here isn't that difficult, so it wouldn't be that difficult to actually draw it. But this method works no matter how complicated the model is. So I'll start off by putting in a reference geometry, a plane, and I'll select, in my case, the right plane. And I want the plane to land somewhere around there. Wherever that plane is, that's where the rubber grip will stop. What I will do is go Insert, Features, Split, and I will use that plane and go Cut Part and simply select the part to the left and the part to the right for the cut. Make sure you deselect Consume Cut Bodies and press OK. 
I'll hide that plane because I'm finished with it. And over here, I see solid bodies two. If I click this first one and rename that handle. This other piece, we'll call that head. So I've got two bodies. I can right click and hide either one of those as I see fit. In fact, I will hide the head for a moment. What I want to do now is go insert features, move copy. And the bodies to move is actually this body. And if I go down and select translate, rotate, I should be able to tick this box, copy. And what I could potentially do is now drag this and leave a copy of itself beside itself. But if I leave the translation at 000 and press OK, it'll give me a little notification, say OK. What it's done is it's placed a copy of itself over itself. So this move body copy, I'm actually going to rename that to rubber grip. So, and I'll hide the handle. Handle and rubber grip are the same shape and occupy the same space. What I'll now do is shell this rubber handle to a thickness of, let's just say, 0.5 of a mil. We'll see how that looks. We'll turn on show preview and remove this face. Now, I don't want that to happen. What I want to happen is this. I want to take the shell outward button, which means it maintains <clears throat> the hollow inside the exact same shape as the handle, but removes that and puts the rubber grip around it. So there it is. If I now turn back on the handle, you can see the handle is inside it. If I turn back on the head, you can see that as well. So to visualize this a little more clearly, I will get, uh, let's say, high gloss plastic for the moment and put it onto, not the part, but the, the body of the handle. I'll hide the rubber grip for a moment and I will put some metal, let's just say steel for a moment, regular steel onto this body and some regular steel onto this body. It's not ideal because those two parts or bodies in reality would not be split like that. So I can simply go insert features combine and I will add this part and that part together. Now that that's set again. So I actually will have to put the metal back on again. There we go. So now if I simply turn on the rubber grip over here, I now have the rubber grip which wraps perfectly around the handle. And the good thing is if the handle changes shape or size, so too will the rubber grip. And I know that's a pretty simple shape, but um, at least it will um, it, it'll, it'll work no matter how complicated the shape. One last thing to do before I uh, finish up <clears throat> is to bring in a decal. Now I want to bring in an image, so if I go to, in, or sorry, if I go to Render Tools, uh, edit decal and browse to find the image which I've placed on my desktop. Uh, this is the preview. I can simply then click this flat surface and it brings in the image like that. And it doesn't look the part because it's got this white background. I don't want the white background, I just want the black image. And even when you render that, it'll take a moment, but if I open up the preview window, the white sticker will still appear and just won't look right. So this is what we'll do. I click this, press the drop down arrow beside appearances and press the X beside the decal to remove it. I will use PowerPoint to edit this decal. So open up PowerPoint and go insert pictures, browse to my desktop, bring in the road sign. It's very hard to see that it has a white background against the white background of the PowerPoint slide. So I will just change the background to say gray for a moment. And if I double click this image, and select color, set transparent color. Now if I click anywhere in the white of this image, the white becomes removed. So now the image has a clear background. So I've edited the image in PowerPoint. So while I'm at it, I'm also going to go to insert text box and I can write in text and Titan only. And you can obviously change the font or the shape and the size of that as you see fit. I'll just make it a little bigger. Now this image, I need to right click and go save as picture, <clears throat> and you must save it as a PNG file. If you save it as a JPEG, it will not remember the clear background. So press save, and while I'm at it, the text box, I can right click the text box, save as picture, make sure it's a PNG file, and save that as well. We're now finished with the PowerPoint. Now, with my newly edited images, I can go to edit decal, browse, go to my desktop, which is where I saved them, and I can bring in picture one, Click there, 
Now it comes in with a black background, but that's not a problem. To, to, that, when you render that, the black background will be gone. But if you want to remove that black background, just simply select Use Decal Image Alpha Channel, and it goes away. And press OK. While I'm at it, I can go to Edit Decal again, Browse, and select the Desktop, Picture 2, click the surface, and now the text comes in. To resize any of these images, you click the corner drag handles. To move them, you click anywhere within the frame. To rotate them, you use this blue circle. I'm trying to get back to see how there it is. So once you're happy with that, that's the decal done. And when you render that, it should look pretty good.